Hi, welcome back to the channel, Paul Stuff. Uh, this is a space where I talk about everything that I love. Lots of Star Wars, lots of lightsabers. And today I'm going to talk about lightsabers, but <clears throat> um, I'm going to try something a little bit different today. Um, so recently I had a request to um, make a video on how I weather lightsabers. Um, and I've been thinking about how to do that. <clears throat> I've got some ideas. Not quite sure how this video is going to go, so we'll we'll see. Um, but what I intend to do today is to take uh, this lightsaber, which is an OWK2 um, from Padawan Outpost. It has been modified. Um, this is the emitter from a uh, Ben 1 because I bought this OWK2 specifically to be able to make this Obi-Wan um, TV series version. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do today <clears throat> is hopefully show you how I achieve this weathered look. So. We're going to go from this to hopefully something more like this. Okay. Now these aren't exactly the same saber. They have had the emitters swapped, which is not an easy job because the threads are different. Um, not something I would recommend you do, but um, it does mean I've ended up with a, a nice episode uh, TV series Obi Wan saber with an episode four style uh, emitter. Um, this o OWK2, um, generally I use as like a test bed now. So um, it has a, uh, has a Denapixel board in it. Um, and I use it for things like testing new sound files, that sort of thing, uh, testing out um, blade colours, blade effects with different colours, um, all of that sort of thing. So it's a fully functional sabre and um, yeah, let's uh, get onto things and uh, have a look at weathering this. Okay, so here we go. Um, first time I'm doing a, like a top down video, we're gonna do uh, some weathering on this, um, this lightsaber hilt. Um, what do we need to do that? Well, we're going to need some uh, latex gloves and pop these on. Just uh, stops your hands getting mucky. If you don't mind your hands getting mucky and cleaning them with thinners and things, then um, that's not a necessary step. But uh, I like to have uh, like to have some protection on my hands. Next, um, we'll need some sandpaper. So here I've got um, 180, 320 and 500 grit sandpapers. Be using those in a moment. We will need some paper towel. Plenty of paper towel, never have too much of it. Um, we will need, this is my weathering palette, as you can see, it's a, a nice dirty one. <clears throat> we will need uh, some washes, go through those with you as we go. We may need some uh, some paints, so um, just going to get those out. I like to use Tamiya paints. You can use whatever you like. Um, generally, I use acrylics, and we'll need some brushes. Okay. So just before um, we start on how I am going to weather this lightsaber. 
Um, I want to show you just a, a, a quick technique first of all for um, for um, doing some of the weathering, which is an alternative to sanding. You might not want to sand your lightsaber, um, but you can still get some of the effects without. So I, I just wanted to show you a, a paint effect called dry brushing. So this is where you get, in this case, a little bit of silver paint on your brush. And then you get rid of most of it off of the brush. And then what you do, um, it just along the edges, you can just dry brush in called dry brushing so you if you're getting too much paint just take some more off the brush and you just go along all the edges and hopefully you can see we're getting a nice silver weathered effect there so that's one one way of getting that effect um, not going to use that on this saber what I'm going to do on this saber is some sanding um, also going to give it a coat of, um, of this uh, semi-gloss clear once all the weathering's on um, and dry. And um, the sanding will actually help that and the other paints to stick a bit better, uh, as well as giving an effect. So I'm going to start off with the lowest grit paper, which is 180. And just going to sand into all of those edges. And you can see we're beginning to get, here's where we did the dry brushing. You can see we're getting a similar effect. Now you want this to look fairly random. So you want to go harder in some places, not so hard in others. Just trying to get all the edges. So every direction, feels a bit rough to be doing this to your new lightsaber, but you have to kind of trust in the process here I'm afraid and just go for it. So you can see that's, that's beginning to come through and all you're doing is taking the paint off on the edges and leaving the metal exposed, which is basically what happens with wear um, as something like this gets used the edges wear quicker and um, you're left with just um, just some uh, some scratch paint work okay so hopefully I just faded that out and now we've faded back in you can see now I've, I've done this process to all of the black paint on the saber and what we're going to do now is move down to 320 grit paper and just very lightly go over the silver bits you don't want massive scratches in this so it really is just the light sand if you go over where you've already gone on the black that's fine just looking to rough up that uh, that shiny surface a little bit. Go in different directions so that not all of your scratches happen in one direction. Scratches often happen in a linear fashion on things, but um, they're very often they're not um, they're not uh, completely linear. So just go around things. Make sure you go different directions. Try and get as much of the, the silver as you can with this paper. We're just looking to, to rough that up. Okay, so now we've um, we've been around the saber. Really should have taken the battery out of this. Uh, <laughs> we've been around the saber um, with 180 on all the black and then 320 across the whole thing. We're just gonna very quickly go through just 
catching the edges again with now 500 grit and what this does is um, it just uh, gives a, a takes the edges off of some of the bigger scratches puts some finer scratches in that's all we're looking to do with this so there we go so the next thing we're going to do is start on the paint now um, for this you want I'm going to start with um, a dark wash now what I've done previously um, is to use this which is uh, Tamiya X18 semi-gloss black use a little bit of that in the palette um, and uh, just water it down with some just with some ordinary tap water um, until you get uh, a thinner sort of paint than um, you get out of the tin um, but at the moment I'm experimenting with MIG dark wash an acrylic dark wash now when I use washes I don't normally use acrylic washes I usually generally use um, enamel washes and I will be using one of those in a moment um, but I thought I'd give this a go so I just put some of that into the palette you see it's a messy job don't do this anywhere nice and we get our black and we just put it all over you see that's going on And we're going to put it all over the first section of the hilt. It nicely covered. Do your blade plugs as well if you want. Then we're going to get a clean piece of towel and we're going to wipe back on it now you can take as much or as little off as you like the sanding you've done will help it stick if you take too much off you can always go back in put some more on so we're, we're just getting this working this black into all of the little nooks and crannies all of the little uh, edges and spaces where dirt's going to collect. I always start off with the darkest of the washes. This is this is almost black. This dark wash, um, and then again, you just wipe back, wipe it in different directions so you get smears in different different places. And you can see how that paint's just staying in some areas. Effectively, what you're doing is um, simulating it being dirty and and then trying to clean it. So the paint comes off of all the areas where it would be clean and um, stays in the rest. You do exactly the same with the black areas. Put the wash on. All over. And then pull it back with a paper towel. Um, um, we'll carry on and do the rest of that in a moment. Now, you do want this to dry before you go to the next stage, which is a, a dark brown wash. So I'm going to um, speed up that process. This is just a, a household hair dryer. I'm just going to go over that, make sure that that is completely dry before I go to the next stage. Okay, so I'm going to cut here and finish off the black wash on the rest of the hill and then we'll come back and I'll show you the brown. Okay, so here we are back again. Um, we've done the whole sabre now with the, the dark wash. I'm hoping that you can see some of this. Not sure how well it's coming out on the video. Um, now we're going to do exactly the same, but this time I'm going to use Migamo's 
uh, Trax wash. It's an enamel wash, so it shouldn't mess with the paint that's already on here, as that's acrylic, um, and it's a dark brown wash. So again, just gonna pour some of that into my palette and like before let's start with the bottom this time because you saw the top last time you paint that on and the reason i use two colors um, you'll see lots of people doing things and they just use a black or a dark one dark color um, always ends up looking a bit monochromatic to me so um yeah um two is uh, the minimum number of colors that i i will use on something like this um sometimes use three or four just depends on the finish i'm looking for there we go you can see now hopefully see you're getting a, a brown wash on here as well It's just enhancing all of the black wash that's gone on before. So you just, you just paint it on quite liberally and um, and then take it off as you see fit. Leave enough or as much or as little on there as you want for a, a dirtier or a cleaner look. There we go, I do this interesting textured piece here. You can see hopefully where the sanding is um, that we did is, is helping this paint to adhere to the surfaces a little as well. Do you, do you clamp cards as well? Um, do the whole thing. And then we just pull that back off with the paper towel and then if we need to leave it to air dry or if we're doing this for the video we'll, we'll speed up the drying a little bit by using the hair dryer. Okay, so I'm going to finish off with the brown and then um, we'll come back and we'll talk about the clear coat. Okay, so um, we've now got to a point where this is almost ready now to um, to put the clear coat on. This is pretty much how it's going to look. Um, the clear coat, you've got a choice with clear coats. Uh, if you want to retain the more shiny look to things, then you can use a, a straight clear coat. Um, I'm going to be using a semi-gloss on this, so it'll retain some of the shine, but it'll dull back all of that silver metal um, and the, the gold coloured pieces. Um, that's kind of what I prefer. Um, you could go to a matte clear coat, which will completely finish everything off. So just to recap what we've done here, we've sanded the black parts um, so that the, the metals come through the paint. Uh, we did that with 180. We then sanded the whole thing with 320 and then finally a 500 just to, um, to finish off. Um, we've then used a black wash. Now washes, as I say, you can make up your own from paints just by watering them down, thinning them down or you can buy made washes. I'm tending to go with made washes, pre-made washes at the moment. Um, and then um, now we're gonna clear coat it. Do with washes, always do a couple of different colors. Um, 
one color just looks a bit monochromatic, a bit, um, yeah, a little bit um, plain and ordinary. So just touching in here, and then we'll dry things off with the hairdryer. Now, um, I'm not going to show you me putting the clear coat on on um, on video because I need to do that in a clear space, um, and I haven't got the video set up to do to take footage of that. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the video again, and I'm going to um, disappear off to um, to put the clear coat on. I'll probably put two or three coats of clear coat on here um, it's just really to protect it um, once that's on and dry we'll come back and have a look and uh, that'll be pretty much the finished article hi so here we are back again with the uh, the finished article so you've seen uh, the process this has been through to get to to here now um, I've um, I've not gone over the top on the weathering with this. It's not as dirty as it could be. Um, if you want to make it more dirty, um, you just spend more time with the washes. Um, you can either put more coats of the wash on, take it off, put more on, take it off till you get the, the coverage that you want. Um, you can allow the um the washes to dry a little bit before you take them back off that will leave a little bit more on so if you want more weathering that's the way you go um you simply um allow the washes to do to 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 stay on more of the washes to stay on the saber um so that's with more you can go the other way as well and put less washes on so this is my uh, episode six luke lightsaber this has weathering on it but it's nowhere near as weathered as this latest one so you can see that there's some weathering around the pommel and there's lots of bits of weathering in the edges and things um, but it's not as heavily weathered as this one and this one is not as heavily weathered as this one okay so a few things um, the last thing we did was to put clear coat on to protect uh, the surface so what that also does um, it um, it dulls down the shine of the metal now it's a paint so when you're handling the lightsaber it will wear um, that can give a nice effect in its own right um, if you don't like that and you want to reapply it there's nothing stopping you from giving it another coat as it wears off um, just see it as routine maintenance if you like um, when you're spraying it on try and get an even coat on don't absolutely smother it in one coat put several light coats on this had three coats um, I normally allow about 20 minutes or so in between coats and of course when you're using a spray paint it's really important that you do it in a well ventilated area preferably with spray paints a warm well ventilated area um, temperature can affect the surface finish that you get from them but definitely a well ventilated area and please use some sort of respirator or mask to protect yourself from the overspray and fumes from the spray paint um, as I said in previously in the video um, if you want to maintain the shine you can use a gloss clear coat this is a semi gloss if you wanted to get rid of more of the metal shine you can go to a flat clear coat and that will will give you a very matte finish 
um, but I like this semi-gloss finish on mine. Um, brushes, um, people in the past have asked me where I buy my brushes. I buy all my brushes from a shop in, these, in, this, in the UK called The Works. Um, they do artist materials. I buy cheap artist brushes. They're, they're great for, uh, for this sort of thing. Um, I use them for detail painting as well. The brushes I used on this, I just used one brush. It was a broad, fairly broad brush, about 10 millimeters wide. Um, you put plenty of the wash on the brush and put it onto the saber, as simple as that. Um, I think they're, um, the, the brushes that I have at the moment are acrylic bristle brushes. So um, they're nothing special, they're just, any old brush really, any old paintbrush, modeling paintbrush, or artist paintbrush. Um, the washes I've used, um, the initial dark wash is from MIG Ammo, and that's an acrylic dark wash. Um, the second wash I used is also from MIG Ammo, that was an enamel um, Trax wash, it's a, like a dark brown color. Now, the reason I like to use enamel washes over acrylic washes is as long as you've let the acrylic wash really dry, the enamel wash won't affect it. It will go on with it rather than trying to take it off. Um, it uses a different... Um, um, it uses a, a different um, solvent. It uses a, a spirit solvent rather than a water solvent. Um, so the two types of um, the uh, the two types of uh, washes don't affect one another. They'll they'll sit with each other on the saber. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much um, my weathering tutorial for you. Um, it is scary getting your new lightsaber and attacking it with sandpaper and paint. There's no denying that. Um, but hopefully this has given you a bit of confidence to um, have a look at what you might be able to do with your own sabers. Um, so, you know, you, you, if you mess up the sanding, you can always take the saber apart, repaint the paint things with a bit of spray paint and start again. Um, the washes start off light, build the washes up and you stop when you, you feel you've got the right effect for yourself. Um, so yeah, so once again, there we go. This is the, the finished weathered lightsaber. I hope you've enjoyed this, this video. Um, if, you, if you like the channel, then if you like the video, then please give it a like. And if you like the channel, then please consider subscribing. Um, I think we're a shade under 300 subscribers at the moment. We're about 20 off of that, I think. Um, so I would really appreciate it if you like the channel, if you if you subscribed. And if you sign up to the, uh, the notification bell, that will uh, notify you when I put new videos up. Um, there are lots of videos on these sorts of lightsabers, these LGT lightsabers. Um, please go back through the through the channel catalogue and and uh, and see what's there if you haven't been here before. So anyway, hope you've liked this video today, and uh, hope to see you again soon on Paul stuff. Bye.